in a recent video, I was taking a look at this little power bank with a solar panel on it, and I couldn't work out why what looks like a real solar panel is putting out so little current. I'll just put this out the way at the moment. It's not needed anymore because this is the bit we're interested in. And I noticed that if you squeezed, I thought it was just the sort of metal films that you, you know, on a solar panel, you get these sort of uh, metal strips that make connections between the panels. And I thought it was something to do with that, which is hidden under a black tape in here. So I squeezed it and the current did increase. And I went outside into the sunshine to give it a good chance. And it was abysmal. It was like really low current. And I've worked out why. You see, this had a front uh, laminated onto it and I heated that up and I peeled it off. And underneath, this is a very flexible circuit board material with a the silicon, and it is proper silicon solar panel cells, which is just kind of disappointing because they've been ruined, basically. And they've been coated in what can best be described as sort of a, a polymer or a silicon rubbery type stuff. Very, You can scratch it, but it's very hard to get this off. And they've been coated in that to pot them, basically. And then the front has been... Uh, laminated under this sort of matte film, uh, which just gives it extra res rigidity, strength, and sort of resistance to abrasion in the front. But what's actually gone wrong here is that right where it goes under the tape, you can see the solar panels have cracked. And I'll show you that. I'll actually crack this because this is unrecoverable. So if you watch this solar panel here, if I flex it very slightly, you can hear slight cracking. But if I flex it right here in the middle, Let's see if this actually shows. It usually shows it's not showing. So that is actually fracturing. The silicon is fracturing, but it's not showing at all. There is a slight hint of the white there. I was hoping it was going to do what it usually does, and I can see the cracks, actually. It was going to create little white craze lines, but they are visible to me, but they might not be so visible to you. Let's, uh, let's do it really seriously then, and then you'll probably see it. No, it still doesn't show. So even though these panels are kind of cracked and broken, it only takes one or two to actually ruin the whole cell, that's, uh, it's not really showing up. So that is the weakness. That's why it was crap, unfortunately. And it's a shame because, as I say, it's got a decent amount of silicon cells in it and they're just very brittle. And this is just too flexible. It's too easy to flex it and it's been crushed in the postage. So I've just thought, I'm about to do a project. I'm just going to cut these wires off and reuse them. So uh, that's a shame, but it has at least put me in the mood for a solar project. It's also put me in the mood for Vailak Sujong Gua, which is the completely wrong pronunciation of this Korean drink, which is called Sweet Cinnamon Punch. And this was sent to me by Simon, along with some other Korean stuff from within the UK. So I'm going to open this up. Oh, before I open it up, let's look at the ingredients. The ingredients are water, cinnamon, sugar, dried persimmon and ginger. All natural ingredients. They haven't even done a Coca-Cola and added caffeine. Ooh, it's uh, it, I should say nice hiss. It was a slight hiss there. I don't think it's carbonated. That's really nice. That is like, it's 30% sugar, which is partly why it's nice, but it's got a super strong cinnamony taste, like cinnamon toast or, or those cinnamon buns, Cinnabon. The other thing that uh, Simon sent, well, he sent a few things, uh, but this one, I won't even try it. I don't think it's got, uh, no, nope, it says, it says in the back, Biscuit Big Caramel. And it's got the, I can't even pronounce that at all, I wouldn't know how that's pronounced, but it also then says in, in English, hazelnut included. And these are like uh, corn puffs. Except, whereas, uh, oh, that's quite well sealed. Whereas our corn puffs tend to be cheesy flavoured, oh, they're enormous. It looks like a huge turd, actually. But uh, this one is apparently chocolate flavour. Breakfast cereal grade. That is basically like a huge cocoa pop. It's very, very sugary coated on the outside. That is ultra sweet. Mm, very nice. I shall take a few of those later on, but not the whole bag. Well, not right now. I'll just paste it. I'm going to, I'm going to eat a bit more. Mm, mm. I'm going to eat the whole thing. Mm. Anyway. Now I've started masticulating noisily. Let's uh, bring the notepad in because we're going to do a project. And a while back I did a project where I used a 
mobile phone battery on the back of a standard solar panel uh, and some circuitry to make a dusk sensor so it turned a light on at night and it, th I made that years ago and it's still I can see it from here it's actually got meteor lights attached to it and they're still running and they run all night they're literally in the morning they're still running as the daylight comes up and it turns off it's very good but here's the plan these uh, batteries usually contain protection circuitry, it's probably worth checking that, but the, I'm pretty sure the Nokia ones all do contain the little protection circuit board that is built onto the same circuit board as the little gold contacts here, and they have the DW01 style chip that automatically shuts it off if you overcharge it and if you over-discharge it. So charging this, you can literally solder onto these charger connections, it's marked here, plus and minus, and you can then... Uh, charge it up the current limited supply, and as soon as it reaches its limit, it will automatically turn off. And that makes it dead easy with a solar panel, because these solar panels, if you count the number of strips in them, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's roughly half a volt per strip, so that equates to a total of 6 volts. I'm not sure if this one's rated, but I'd guess it's going to be about 100 milliamp from the size of those, maybe a bit more, uh, especially in direct sunlight. On the back, it's got a, a sort of T-shaped connection at either end. It's got the the metal strip is coming through a hole, and then it's soldered, and then the whole lot's all covered in resin. And uh, there's a track comes up here, and then feeds these tracks. So this is these are all negative connections, and these are all positive connections. And all you need to charge one of these batteries from a little solar panel like this, which is inherently limited in the amount of current it can put out, is a diode. So here's what we're going to do. Here is the solar panel, which I'm not going to draw the full number of cells, but let's say 6 volts. And the positive is going to go straight across to the lithium cell. And I'm going to write protected. It's quite important that it is protected. You don't want to use an unprotected one, because uh, then it would potentially overcharge it. Another part in this circuit is very simple. You have a diode. Now, it would have been kind of easier just to draw it as the diode on the positive side, but there is a reason I'm drawing it down here. And that is because I'm going to use a dusk sensor circuit, and it's going to be slightly different from the last one. It's experimental, it might not work. And if it doesn't work, you'll see it not working, and then we'll fix it. But basically speaking, we're going to use a transistor, and it's one of the simplest dark sensors possible. A standard NPN transistor. So there's the emitter going to the battery's negative rail. There's the... Uh, Collector, which is going to be switching the load. So let's uh, put a LED up there and then a resistor to limit the current and then to the collector of the transistor. And I'm going to use roughly a 10 ohm resistor, I think. Uh, I might use higher, depends what I'm going to do. I'm hoping to drive this big string of 100 LEDs from it. They're green and that's one of the, the most efficient colours, so uh, it should be pretty good at that. And here's the very simple bit. Normally... All you'd have to do to turn this transistor on, when it gets dark, is have a resistor coming down from here and then tie this to the negative side. And it means that when the unit's charging, this side of the diode is slightly more negative because of the voltage drop across and it keeps the transistor turned off. But when uh, it's uh, dark, then the voltage across the cell uh, reduces to the point it's not actually keeping that transistor turned off because there's no current flowing through the diode. And then a resistor up here turns it on. But when I was doing this last time, I noticed something odd. I noticed that even with that resistor disconnected, because it's playing with values, it lit. And uh, that was current flowing in reverse through the... When the, a solar panel like this, when it's dark, you get a slight reverse leakage current through it, and it's enough to turn the transistor on. And it got me thinking, you know, the easiest thing then, the easiest way to do this is just have a resistor down to the negative rail and just rely when it's dark and the current flowing through here, through that uh, solar panel, through the resistor and into the transistor. But it does depend on the leakage in this panel. But um, I'm going to try this out. And if it doesn't work, then I'll just go to what it would have been before, which would have been the resistor up here coming down there of a typical value, let's say 10k. I would have used up there. Let's try, since this is going to, uh, let's try 10k down here. I can always uh, experiment with it. And that's the circuit. That's all that's involved in this dusk sensor. So during daylight, it will charge the lithium cell. And when it gets dark, 
too dark to put uh, current out from the solar panel, it will then stop holding the transistor off, the transistor will turn on, and then it will light the LEDs until either dawn arises again, if it, it, it isn't uh, drawing too much current and the cell's well charged, or if the cell goes too low, the DW01 protection chip will cut in and it will turn the power off until it's charged again. Very, very simple. The transistor I'm going to be using is a BC547. It's maybe not so common in other parts of the world. It's very common in Britain. It falls into the category of what Elector Electronics, the magazine used to call uh, TUN, Transistor Universal NPN. They had this typical terminology, TUP, TUN, DUG, DUS. And uh, it was, TUP was Transistor Universal PNP, uh, TUN, Transistor Universal NPN, DUG, Diode Universal Germanium, and DUS, Diode Universal Silicon. What it meant was that wherever you were in the world, whatever you could get, just use that component that you can get. Because uh, every, every country has its standard transistor. And it's just a very simple way of doing things. It means that I'm not specifying exact components. So the pinout of that one is... Let me see if that's the transistor with the text in the front, 547BC. It's going to be collector, base and emitter. If in doubt, just type the name of whatever transistor you can get into Google um, and do an image search and you'll find pictures like this or showing the pinout. It's a, Google is just a huge data sheet. It's fantastic. So let's start by putting the... Solar panel, the, uh, this battery, onto the back of the solar panel. I'm going to stick it on with double-sided tape. There's a reason for this. I'm going to put two layers of tape to pack it up, and they're going to be at both ends. Uh, I'm going to decide now. This is the negative, this is positive. Is that going to work out? It's going to be fine. So I'm going to overlap it to the point I can still access these solar connections and the solar connections on the battery. They're not actually officially solder connections. In fact, let's tin them now. This is the trickiest bit because they're slightly recessed. But it usually takes solder just fine. This is where it probably won't take solder just out of spite. The middle connection is a temperature sensor, I think, in these most cells. That'll do. Now I'm going to use the double-sided foam pads for two reasons. And I'm going to use two of them. It's to pack it up off the solar panel. And that's to let air flow around it and also keep it away because the solar panel itself is going to get potentially quite hot because it's being heated by the sunlight, by direct exposure to the sunlight. So by deliberately packing it off with these foam pads, that provides thermal insulation. And just on a hunch, I'm going to put two on to make it further apart and also leave a gap in the middle to kind of allow air flow and just ensure that... Uh, any heat that does creep through is dissipated. The inside, if this is an enclosure outside, and I, I like the idea of using a, a a solar, not a solar, but a garden outdoor floodlight, but actually with the solar panel inside it and just relying it as a waterproof box with the glass. I quite like that idea. But you could also, I suppose, use a bag to protect this or any clear lidded uh, enclosure. All it has to do is let the sun through. I like the idea of the glass because it will filter some of the ultraviolet. Some of these panels, the resin degrades under direct ultraviolet exposure and it results in a sort of frosting and hazing. So let's uh, position this. Try and get it fairly close to what I want uh, and then just stick it down. That's it done. It's like Blue Peter, but more dangerous. Let's also tin those pads of the solar panel, so that's a positive one. It's kind of, it's marked on the circuit board here so I can see it. I should actually theoretically check such things. I should check all polarities, shouldn't I? You just never know if something's been marked incorrectly or assembled with the circuit board back to front. Let's do that. So, if I hold this at an angle that light is going to hit it and I put the probes here, I should see a positive voltage. Yes, I do, that's good. And likewise, just to check the battery, uh, negative and positive, and I'm getting 3.8 volts, so it's about half charged. 
The reason uh, they say you should store lithium cells at a half charge, if you're going to be storing them for a long time, they recommend about 3.6 volts. And if you work it out, that's between three at the minimum discharge, which is three volts, and the uh, maximum charge is 4.2 volts. And at both the minimum and maximum, the lithium is either going to be basically concentrated on one side or the other. So by discharging it to a half or charging it to half level, the lithium is diffused well into the sort of the lithium ions are diffused well into both electrodes. It just means it's at its least reactive. It prolongs the life of the cells. So let's uh, put the charging circuit in. So that's going to be from the negative to the negative connection over here. I'm going to add then, because it's going to make access just a little bit trickier, I'm going to add the positive connection first. Now let me think, positive is going straight to the battery connection, so I'll use that as the common for all further connections that are required. And I'm going to size this to come around like this. I'll leave it generous because there's no, we shouldn't really need to hide the wiring much. It's going to make it easier to actually assemble this if we just leave tons of room for ourselves to work. So I shall connect the positive onto the positive of the battery. Like this. I'll try and make it look relatively neat-ish. Job done. And that is going to go to the solar panels positive. This is where, when I try soldering that later on, other connections onto that, it's probably going to pop right back off. But that's okay, we'll deal with that when it happens. And now I'm going to use the diode. And again, I'm going to leave it full length just because it's more convenient. So it's going to be going with the band pointing towards the negative terminal. Oh no, it's going to be pointing the... Yes, it is actually. It is going to be pointing towards the negative terminal using conventional current flow. Here we go. And I'm going to fold the lead round and I'm going to put it onto the negative terminal of the battery. So I'm going to tin the end of that. I could zoom down so you can see this more, but uh, will I zoom down just? I'll zoom down just a little bit, but not too much, because otherwise it gets a wee bit too in your face. So now, if I flow that solder. That is the charging circuit complete. And now, if I turn this up towards the light, that battery is actually taking a charge from the solar panel now. It's not going to be a high current. Uh, I'm just going to have some cinnamon. Mm. That is super sweet. Right, what are we going to do next? Let's add the transistor now. The transistor is going to be... Um, the this is, is going to be connected to the emitter. Let's bring that back in again. The emitter connection, which is this connection, is going to be connected to the battery and where it joins onto the diode. So let's do that. This could get a bit messy. I'm not sure if this is how I should really have done this, but I didn't think it through beforehand. It wasn't planned. It's a sort of spontaneous make it up as I go type of thing. So let's say, uh, this is the emitter, and I want to put it onto the negative terminal, like that. Uh, I shall solder it about, yeah, there. I'll just leave plenty of space again. This can be neatened up afterwards. Keep in mind that connection there, which I should actually maybe cover with tape. Uh, and we would do that afterwards, uh, is the negative terminal of coming from the back of the solar panel. So now I want this terminal is going to be the positive uh, leading via a resistor to the LEDs. So I'll just fold that up out of the way. This terminal is going to go with a resistor to the other side of that diode, like that. And this is experimental. I've not tried this particular arrangement before. It might not work. If it doesn't work, we'll fix it. 
So I'm going to use a 10k resistor, which is quite a high value. It means that the transistor may not turn on fully, uh, which will potentially um, mean that uh, the LEDs don't light as bright as they could have. But I can always tweak the values, so I'll leave, uh, I'll leave enough space that I can uh, add... I can put another resistor bridge it across it for experimental purposes. So I'm going to tin that, I'm going to tin that, I'm going to flow the resistor onto that, and then I'm going to bring the resistor around and I'm going to touch it onto this side of the diode here. I'm going to lift that up just a wee tad, just away from the plastic insulation below of the other wire, just so I don't melt it. And let's try and make this relatively neat-ish. It's a bit late for that really, isn't it? It's messy, but that's okay. I'm going to actually hook that underneath. That seems easy enough, and then flow solder on them. That looks pretty good. Uh, let's add the 10 ohm resistor for the LEDs, which will be going between the positive connection over here and this via the resistor. So what I'll do is I shall crop this lead and get my 10 ohm resistor, brown, black, black, one zero and uh, no zeros as a multiplier. And I shall tin these. And stick them together. Like that. Looking pretty good. This is where another sticky pad, I could actually have used that to anchor it down. I may actually put a double-sided pad under here and then just squish everything down onto it. So let's uh, now connect the LEDs. The, is this almost the project done? That's too easy. Something must have gone horribly wrong. So I'm going to lock these LEDs off here. I'm going to find the polarity. I'm going to strip this. I'm sure it'll have ultra-thin wire. Stripper. And one of these is going to the positive terminal on the battery. Uh, and the, indeed it's going down to this pad in the solar panel. So I shall twist these and I shall pre-tin them and then I'll check the polarity. Checking the polarity is dead easy. I'm just going to hold across a lithium button cell and see which way around the LEDs light. So that's that wire tinned. Let's get a red Sharpie in on standby. Get a lithium cell. Uh, do I have a decent? Yeah, this will do. I'm going to clamp that across. It hasn't lit. Turn it around. Double check. It hasn't lit either. This lithium cell may be completely flat. Right, let's try a different one. There we go. So uh, the positive side was this lead. So I'm just going to put a wee dot in that. And that is going to the positive connection down here that the other wire is promptly going to ping right back off. So I'm going to try and hold them both down while I solder it. Oop, messy, but that's alright, I'll clean it up later on. He lied. And then that goes over to the resistor. And solder's on there. And theoretically now, the LEDs have lit up with the current that's uh, because it's dark. And if I, the slightest hint of light makes the LEDs go out. So it really is. It's going to have to be very dark before they come on. That's quite good. So let's test that. Let's uh, zoom back out. And at the moment, uh, the light is charging this. And I'm going to take exposure off, and I'm going to turn the light out, and the LEDs have come on. And if I get, have I got a wee torch here I can shine that? I had a wee torch I could shine in that, but I've misplaced that torch. Is this going to work? Yes, it is. Any light source at all, of any modest intensity, oh, maybe it's going to take more to, to actually turn that off. It's going to take a modest amount to turn that off. 
uh, which is kind of good in a way and maybe not so good in another way. Yeah, it's taken a fair amount of light. Uh, I'm going to test that with a... Oh, hold on. That was at its lowest setting. Let's see if I can do it with the this LED light. It's a... Oh yeah, now it's working. That looks a lot... It's just a little cob keychain light. It's not that bright. So uh, that was really low light level. Oh, that is, yeah, it's having to be really dark before that comes on. But that's good because it means that it's not going to come on during daylight. And that is the project. That has worked a treat. So what's happening here is the solar panel here, let's set it right next to that solar panel. Ignore this now because I didn't end up having to use that. It charges the protected lithium cell with the protection circuit, must the protection circuit, via this diode. And while it's charging, this side of the diode is effectively more negative than this, just because you get the voltage drop of roughly about 0.6 volts across a diode. This transistor has its emitter on this side of the diode. It's connected to the battery here. Uh, and it's got the base that, if as soon as it goes about 0.6 volts above the emitter, it turns that on. So the base is connected via this resistor, and it's de detecting the leakage through this solar panel when it's dark. And when it does that, uh, when it is dark and that leakage occurs, it turns the transistor on, which then from the charged lithium cell, the current flows through the LEDs, the resistor in series to limit current, and then through the transistor. And it will stay light, well, stay lit for as long as there's capacity in this battery, or until the sun sh 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 sunshine comes back up in the morning and then it will turn them back off. But that is working pretty well, I have to say. That is working very well. So a uh, good result. That was quite a nice, simple project. Very easy and good result.